What's going on, YouTubers? My name is Inverted Joker, and welcome back to episode 5 of Rainbow Six Siege Pro Tips. Thank you guys so much for all the views and likes. It really does mean a lot, and I've grown super fast in the short amount of time that I've restarted my channel. So once again, thank you guys. But the topic of today's video is going to be outsmarting enemies and forcing them to do exactly what you want them to do and not what they want you to do. So we're going to start off with attackers, obviously, as you can see in the video, and it is really the most easy way to bait people into what you want them to do because you gotta remember defenders get really impatient when they're holed up in one objective area so it's really easy to force them out into hallways and terrible lines of sight as you'll see repetitively in all the attacker portions of this video but before you can even think about doing that your number one priority is to pop out all the cameras because when you kill the other team they're obviously gonna get on the cameras and scan your last known location so if you can get a good pop on those cameras the enemy team's going to have no idea where you're coming from unless they're watching the cameras the whole time and you popped them right before they right before they spotted you. So you really just want to make sure they can't spot you or communicate to their team exactly where you are. So that's an obvious one, but it is the main priority. And another really big point that I don't see a lot of people doing is you really have to be moving the whole time. That's whether you're um, shooting or you're just breaching a room because like right here, I bait this guy to this window and you want to make sure that you're covering your reloads and what I mean by that is you're behind cover every single time you reload so you, they don't catch you on the reload and shoot you when you're reloading. I don't know how many times I see this but unless you have a stagnant target like I did there you want to make sure you're moving the whole time because it's so much harder to hit a moving target than it is to hit like a stagnant or um, still target I guess I could, sh could say but just make sure you're repetitively moving no matter what you're moving and cover your reloads and another thing I have to really communicate to you guys is that you need to know what's around you. Like you need to have good situational awareness because time after time I get into games and teammates just don't know what they're, what's going on around them. Like there's people outside, they don't even realize it. They get focused in on one area. So don't ever get tunnel vision. Just make sure you're always looking around. You're not focused on one room for too long. And like right here, I get the pick, the early pick on this guy after I shoot a C4 out. He comes out, just gives me his head. Like I said before, it's easy to bait them into what you're doing but I start taking fire from someone else and I can't really pinpoint where he is so I give him returning fire and then I do what's least expected I'm gonna go up to the top here and come down through a different window and I surely do catch him off guard but you just wanna always do what is least expected so if they expect you to stay in that window and gunfight with them because everyone else does why not move the other window and like here I have sledge so they didn't really they didn't even hear me breach that hole it was just too late and um, I came in behind him that was the same guy that was shooting at me before and um, th this guy over here he's laying down behind a couch he kills my teammate my teammate calls it out and if you notice I have somebody on the right side over there so even if this grenade doesn't impact him he can still shoot him when he gets up to run from the grenade so either way he would have died there especially after calling the guy out but um, and, and like here we both decide to breach in and I get shocked by this wire and I know that there's a guy on the other side of this door with a shotgun, I just don't know where he is. So of course I let the shielder um, progress through the doorway first, and then I come in behind him. And I'm really lucky that my grenade didn't kill him here, but when people see shields, they generally like to spaz out. So I made sure I followed right in behind this guy, and I knew the guy was going to spaz. And I saw when I was coming in through the um, window, which is another thing you need to look out for. You need to know exactly what doors are open and what windows are open, but... When I came through that window, I realized the door ahead of me was open and the door to the side was open. So he had nowhere else to go besides out through the other doorway and then run right into me. So I baited him into doing what I wanted him to. Now you can do this on the defensive side too, but it's a little bit harder. Because if you want to bait the other team into doing what you want them to do, it's it's based upon um, pre-round setup. So you want, you want to strategically place barriers and barbed wire and all of that to where you're forcing the other team to walk down one tunnel and not from multiple different directions and if they do go the ways that you don't want them to go generally they have to use breaching charges to get through so it's a lot easier for you to hear where they're coming from or they're going to knock the um, boards out with their guns if they're not castle barriers so either way you're going to hear audibly hear and visually see exactly where people are coming from and to tie back into situational awareness I know somebody's coming around this corner because he shot at my teammate, my teammate revived himself, and when I came down the stairs, that guy didn't have a microphone in, but what I can tell you is, when I, when I came around the corner and I, I started to pie it a little bit, 
he was looking into the other doorway so it kind of gave me a clue as to where the guy was going to be coming from and right here once again situational awareness guys my teammate and the microphone is communicating that that guy's right there but right before i heard him say anything i saw the red the red marker indicating where he was and then glass right here gives me the free and easy slim pickings he's standing up he's not moving if he'd have been moving i probably wouldn't have hit him and he'd had a better shot on me but um just to summarize for you guys you're gonna want to always 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 be moving you want to pop out cameras cover your reloads stay behind cover when you're reloading don't get caught on the reload don't be out in the open reloading your gun when you're in the middle of a gunfight um, you want to have good situational awareness know what's around you if you're defending and someone on your, on your team's castle make sure you communicate to that guy hey um, you know we need a barrier here and a barrier here that way we can force him through this doorway we got reinforced walls behind us so they're gonna have to be thermite to come through there you're gonna hear him when he's thermite you know these are the things that need to be communicated with your team and um, it'll just overall help your your level of play if you combine all the pro tip series that I've done so far all, all the videos in the series and you combine that with this episode in the series and I promise you guys you're gonna do great but until next time guys my name's Inverted Joker, and I'm signing out. Throw, 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 throw it up. <laughs> Start twerking like Molly. Oh, yeah. Twerking like Molly. Don't pop it like Molly.